Hey everyone, and welcome back to HIV RNA Test Guide Podcast. You know, we're your go-to source for staying up to date on HIV testing here in the US. And let me tell you, there's some really promising news out there right now. There is indeed, we've been following the latest research and it looks like scientists might be on the brink of a major breakthrough in HIV vaccine development. Okay, so walk me through this. I know finding an effective HIV vaccine has been a huge challenge for decades. What's different about this new research? Well, this, this research published in Science Translational Medicine focuses on a new approach. You see, traditional vaccines use a piece of the virus itself to trigger an immune response, but HIV is a master at changing and mutating, making those approaches less effective. So what's the new strategy? Researchers at Scripps Research have developed a vaccine that uses a harmless virus called an adeno-associated virus, or AAV. Think of it like a tiny delivery truck that carries a special protein called ECD4IG into the body. Okay, and what's so special about this ECD4IG protein? It's essentially a decoy. This protein mimics the receptors that HIV normally uses to latch onto and infect cells. The virus is tricked into binding to the ECD4 IG instead, which then activates a process that prevents the virus from infecting cells. So it's like setting a trap for the virus and making it disarm itself before it can do any damage. That's a great way to put it. And the most exciting part is that in trials with rhesus macaques, a single injection of this vaccine provided long-term protection against even the Death Star strain of HIV, which is notoriously difficult to neutralize. Wait, Death Star strain, what makes it so tough? It's officially known as SIV MAC239, and it's earned its nickname because it's incredibly resistant to most other vaccine approaches. Think of it as the most challenging opponent in the HIV world. Wow, so this new vaccine is kind of a superhero then, blocking even the toughest strains with just one shot. This sounds almost too good to be true. It's definitely promising, but it's important to remember that this research is still in its early stages. While the results in monkeys are encouraging, we need to see how this translates to humans. All right, and of course. So what are the next steps for this research, human trials? Exactly. The next step is to conduct human safety trials to make sure the vaccine is safe for people. They'll also need to test whether it can effectively prevent HIV infection in humans and potentially even suppress existing infections. I imagine there are a lot of people out there who are very eager to hear more about these trials. This could be huge for so many people, especially those worried about HIV risk. Absolutely. It's definitely something to keep an eye on. And speaking of keeping an eye on things, one important detail from the study is that while the vaccine provided strong protection, the animals could still become infected if they were exposed to extremely high doses of HIV. So it's not a foolproof shield, but still a significant step forward, right? But even if it works perfectly in humans, don't we also need to think about how to make this vaccine accessible to everyone who needs it? You're bringing up a crucial point, even with a groundbreaking vaccine, there's still the massive hurdles of distribution affordability and ensuring equitable access for all we need to start thinking about those challenges now. Absolutely. I mean, what good is a miracle vaccine if people can't actually get it? But hey, let's stay optimistic. This new research seems like a real game changer. It truly does. It seems this approach could offer long lasting protection and might even work against a wide range of HIV strains. Plus, the same technology could be used to develop vaccines for other diseases, too. Hold on. Other diseases, too? Like researchers are already exploring its use for things like influenza, A and malaria. Imagine a world with single shot, long lasting protection against some of the most prevalent and deadly diseases. OK, now that's a future I can get behind. But for now, let's get back to this HIV vaccine you mentioned. There were some caveats in the study. Can you tell me more about those? What should we be aware of? Of course, one thing the researchers noted is that some HIV resistance to the ecd 4 ig protein did emerge in the study. Now, thankfully, this resistance appeared in a weakened form, but it's definitely something to watch closely. Makes sense. It's like a constant arms race between yeah. the virus and our efforts to fight it. So what does this potential resistance mean for the future of this vaccine? Well, it highlights the need for ongoing research and vigilance. We need to understand how this resistance develops and find ways to counter it. But it also reminds us that HIV is a formidable opponent constantly adapting and evolving. That's a sobering thought, but let's focus on the positive for a moment. The fact that this vaccine was effective against the Death Star strain is incredibly encouraging. Absolutely. It shows that we are making progress and that innovative approaches like this one have the potential to change the game in HIV prevention. I'm curious, though, about the potential side effects of this new vaccine. Were there any observed in the animal studies? That's an important question, and the researchers were very mindful of potential risks. 
The good news is that the monkeys in the study didn't experience any serious immune reactions to the AAV vector, or the ecd 4 ig protein. That's reassuring to hear safety is paramount, especially with a new type of vaccine. Exactly. Thorough safety testing in humans will be a top priority. And speaking of safety, researchers are also exploring ways to further enhance the ecd 4 i protein to minimize the risk of HIV developing resistance. That's great to hear. So we talk a lot about the science behind this new vaccine, but I think our listeners would be interested to know what this could mean for them personally. What's the takeaway for someone listening right now? Well, the biggest takeaway is hope this research represents a significant leap forward in the quest for an effective HIV vaccine, while there's still a long way to go before this vaccine could be available to the public. The results are incredibly encouraging. That's a powerful message. Hope is crucial, especially when dealing with a virus like HIV. Absolutely. And while we wait for further developments, it's crucial to remember that there are already effective ways to prevent HIV transmission like pre-PP, and early testing is vital for those who may have been exposed. You're right. We have tools available right now that can make a real difference. But this new vaccine research offers a glimpse of a future where HIV prevention could be even more effective and accessible. Precisely. And that's a future worth striving for. This has been an incredibly insightful look at this groundbreaking HIV research. It's clear that this is just the beginning of a long and complex journey but it's a journey filled with a lot of hope. Indeed, and with continued research collaboration and a focus on equitable access, we can move closer to a world where HIV is no longer a global threat. It's truly remarkable how far HIV research has come. Even just a few years ago, a vaccine like this seemed like a distant dream. I know, it's amazing to see how scientific advancements can completely shift the landscape of what's possible, and it makes you realize just how much work goes on behind the scenes before a breakthrough like this even makes headlines. Absolutely. Years of dedicated research, countless hours in the lab, and the tireless efforts of so many brilliant minds all contribute to these moments of progress. And sometimes it takes thinking outside the box, like with this AAV approach, to really make a difference. That's the beauty of science. It's all about pushing boundaries, challenging assumptions, and exploring new frontiers. And, you know, speaking of frontiers, I was particularly intrigued by the potential of this technology for other diseases like influenza A and malaria. Right. When you mentioned that earlier, my mind kind of exploded. I mean, imagine a world where we could have single shot vaccines that provide long lasting protection against some of the world's deadliest diseases. It sounds almost too good to be true. It does sound incredibly promising, doesn't it? And while we're not quite there yet, the potential is definitely there. This AAV platform could revolutionize vaccine development as we know it. It's like opening a door to a whole new era of disease prevention. Okay, so help me understand this better. How could this one technology work against so many different diseases? Well, the beauty of this AAV approach is that it's like a modular system. You can swap out the genetic code inside the AAV to target different viruses or diseases. So it's like having a universal delivery system that you can customize for each specific target. Exactly, and the researchers are already exploring the use of AAV to deliver not just preventative vaccines, but also therapeutic treatments. I mean, hold on, therapeutic treatments, you mean using it to treat existing infections? Precisely. For example, there's promising data suggesting that AAV delivered ecd 4 i could potentially suppress an established HIV infection, not just prevent it. So it could be both a preventative measure and a treatment option. Wow, that is incredible. It's almost hard to wrap my head around the potential impact this could have on global health. It really is groundbreaking, and it's a testament to the power of human ingenuity and the relentless pursuit of knowledge. But as we've discussed, scientific breakthroughs are only half the battle. Ensuring equitable access to these life-saving innovations is equally crucial. Right, it's like we can invent the world's most amazing car, but it's useless if most people can't even afford the gas to drive it. That's a great analogy. We can't let cost logistics or social inequalities stand in the way of progress. We need to start laying the groundwork now to ensure that when these breakthroughs become a reality, they reach everyone who needs them, not just a privileged few. I completely agree. We need to be proactive, not reactive. But how do we even begin to tackle such massive issues like global access and affordability? It's a complex challenge, but it starts with open dialogue and collaboration. Governments, healthcare systems, researchers, pharmaceutical companies, and communities worldwide all need to work together to find solutions. It sounds like a monumental task, but I guess even the longest journey begins with a single step, and this research feels like a giant leap in the right direction. Absolutely. It's a step towards a future where scientific advancements benefit all of humanity and not just a select few, and that's a future worth fighting for. Okay, so 
We've talked about the potential of this new vaccine technology, both for HIV and other diseases. We've touched on the challenges of access and distribution. Mm. What else should our listeners be thinking about when it comes to this research? I think it's important to remember that even with the most promising scientific advancements, there are always ethical considerations. For example, how do we prioritize who receives access to a potentially life-saving vaccine when supplies are limited? How do we ensure informed consent and address potential concerns about vaccine hesitancy? Those are weighty questions. It's a lot to think about. It is, but these are conversations we need to have as a society. Science doesn't exist in a vacuum. It's intertwined with ethics values and social impact. It's almost like this research isn't just a scientific breakthrough. It's a societal breakthrough, too. It forces us to confront some really complex issues that we might not have been ready to address before. That's a really insightful observation. And, you know, it's not just about HIV. These same questions apply to any scientific advancement that has the potential to significantly impact human lives. Right, like gene editing, artificial intelligence, even climate change solutions. Exactly. The ethical considerations go hand in hand with the scientific progress. This has been an incredibly thought-provoking conversation. I feel like we've only just scratched the surface of this topic, but we've covered a lot of ground. We have, and I think the most important thing is that we've sparked some curiosity and encouraged our listeners to think critically about the implications of this research. Absolutely. Knowledge is power. But it's what we do with that knowledge that truly matters. Well said. And speaking of knowledge, there's one more aspect of this research I'd like to touch on before we wrap up. Okay, I'm all ears. What else should we be considering? While this new vaccine is incredibly exciting, it's important to remember that it's not a magic bullet. HIV is a complex virus, and even with a highly effective vaccine, we'll still need to continue research efforts to fully understand and ultimately eradicate the virus. That makes sense. A vaccine might prevent new infections, but it doesn't address the millions of people already living with HIV. Exactly. We need to continue investing in research for better treatments, a cure, and strategies to improve the quality of life for people living with HIV. So it's not a case of mission accomplished if this vaccine is successful. It's just one piece of a much larger puzzle. Precisely. It's a vital piece, but it's not the whole picture. I appreciate you bringing that perspective to the conversation. It's easy to get caught up in the excitement of a breakthrough and lose sight of the bigger picture. It is, but I think it's important to maintain a balanced perspective. We need to celebrate the progress while also acknowledging the work that still needs to be done. Well said, and I think that's a perfect note to end this part of our deep dive on. We've explored the science, the potential, the challenges and the ethical considerations surrounding this groundbreaking HIV vaccine research. We have, and hopefully we've given our listeners a lot to think about and discuss. But before we completely wrap up this episode, there's one more crucial question I think we should address. So we've talked about the science, the possibilities, the logistics, even some ethical considerations, but let's bring it back to our listeners, especially those who might be tuning in because they're looking for information about HIV testing. What's the one thing you want them to walk away with after this deep dive? That's a great question, and it's especially relevant for our audience who are focused on HIV testing here in the U.S. Uh -huh. I think the most important message is this. While a vaccine would be an incredible tool in the fight against HIV, it's not a replacement for the prevention and testing strategies we have available right now. So you're saying even with this promising research on the horizon, people shouldn't let up on their guard or put off getting tested. Exactly. In fact, knowing your status is more important than ever. Early diagnosis and treatment are crucial for managing HIV and preventing transmission. And for those who are HIV negative, there are effective prevention methods like pre-RPP, which can significantly reduce the risk of infection. All right, we've got those tools in our arsenal right now. No need to wait for a vaccine that's still years away. Absolutely. And remember, regular HIV testing is key for everyone, regardless of their perceived risk. It's the only way to know for sure and get the care you need if you do test positive. You know, it's easy to get caught up in the excitement of a potential breakthrough like this vaccine and think, problem solved. But as we've discussed, it's more nuanced than that. It is, and it's also important to remember that this research was conducted on rhesus macaques, not humans, while the results are incredibly promising. We need to see how this translates to human trials before we get too carried away. Right, we need to temper our enthusiasm with a dose of reality. Exactly. Science takes time, and there's still a long road ahead before this vaccine could potentially be available to the public. But let's imagine for a moment that everything goes smoothly, the trials are successful, and this vaccine becomes a reality. What would that mean for the future of HIV prevention and testing? Well, it could potentially revolutionize the landscape of HIV prevention. 
A safe, effective, and widely accessible vaccine could dramatically reduce the number of new HIV infections and eventually help us get closer to ending the epidemic. Wow, that's a powerful vision. A world where HIV is no longer a public health threat. It's a vision worth striving for, and this research gives us real hope that it might one day be achievable. But even in a world with an HIV, vaccine testing wouldn't become obsolete, right? Exactly. Testing would still be crucial for monitoring the effectiveness of the vaccine, identifying potential breakthrough infections, and ensuring people living with HIV receive appropriate care and treatment. So testing remains a cornerstone of our efforts to combat HIV both now and in the future. Absolutely. Regardless of the advancements we make in prevention and treatment, knowing your status through regular testing empowers you to make informed decisions about your health and protect yourself and others. That's a powerful message to leave our listeners with. Knowledge is power couldn't agree more. And remember, we're here to provide you with accurate and reliable information about HIV testing across the United States. Visit our website or social media channels for resources and guidance on finding testing locations near you. This deep dive has been an incredible journey through the latest advancements in HIV vaccine research. While we've covered a lot of ground, We've also raised a lot of questions that don't have easy answers. And that's okay. Science is about asking questions, exploring possibilities, and constantly pushing the boundaries of what we know. This research is a reminder that science can offer hope and pave the way for a brighter future. But it also highlights the importance of individual responsibility, community action, and global collaboration in the fight against HIV. Well said. And as we move forward, let's keep those principles in mind. Knowledge, action, and collaboration are our most powerful tools in this journey. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into the world of HIV research. We'll be back soon with more explorations into the ever-evolving landscape of HIV testing and prevention. Until then, stay informed, stay curious, and keep advocating for a healthier future for all.